Okay, so now having covered price elasticity of demand, price elasticity of supply becomes very simple to understand. Again, using PES to abbreviate. The definition is this. PES measures, it's a measure, the responsiveness of quantity supplied given a change in price. Okay, so we know that the law of supply states that when the price of a good goes up, the quantity supplied of that good will also go up, and vice versa. When the price falls, quantity supplied will fall. The law of supply. But now we want to know, well, how much will quantity go up when the price go up, goes up? How much will quantity go down when the price goes down? That's exactly what we want to know. Okay, so just like PED, but now using supply instead of demand. The equation is exactly the same. You just substitute supply instead of demand. So the percentage change in quantity supply over the percentage change in price. And again, we're going to get a figure. Now that figure, okay, will be positive always. The law of supply, okay, states that the relationship between quantity supply and price must be positive. Okay, so we're going to have a, a positive number here, whereas the PED, it was a negative number. Right now, positive. So in truth, we're not worried about the sign again. We know it's going to be positive. Again, the same kind of relationships exist. So when we get our number, how can we interpret the number? Greater than 1 will be price elastic, just like before. The less than 1 price inelastic, okay, supply doesn't respond very much to a change in price. Price elastic, supply responds. Quantity supply responds more than proportionately, okay, than the price change. Okay, so price, um, when the price changes, quantity supply responds by a large amount, elastic. And then we've got the extremes here, just as we had before. On a diagram, what does it look like? Well, we have our basic supply curve, upward sloping, so price and quantity, and we have an upward sloping supply curve, S1. Okay, just like that as normal. All right, now let me draw it slightly steeper. So let's say our supply curve looks like that, where well, you can see now a change in the price from P1 to let's say P2, so a downward fall in the price will have very little impact on quantity, so from Q1 to Q2. Okay, so that's inelastic supply curve, again, steep. The steeper you draw it, the more inelastic supply is. Uh, the, the shallower you draw it, okay, the more elastic supply is. All right, so that's something to bear in mind too. When we're drawing inelastic or elastic supply curves, you would um, shape it like that. So just like with PED, but now with supply curve, okay? So, question. What determines whether a good is going to be um, price elastic or price inelastic? Okay, so whether supply for a good will be price inelastic or price elastic. The way I remember this, and kid, my students love this, um, is pretend you're opening a can of pop. Okay, what sound does it make? You open it and it goes pssst. <laughs> That's the way I remember this one. Okay, so you need to remember pssst and then three S's in there. Okay, so pssst. That's the way to remember it. Okay, and three S's in that. Pss. Difficult one to, to find a memory device because there are no vowels in it. But anyway, it works. All right. So what does it stand for? P, production lag. Okay, production lag. S, um, substitutability. Difficult word to spell that one. Substitutability of factors of production. Okay, another S, level of stocks. Another S, level of spare capacity. These are all very important. And again, we have the time period. Okay, so just remember opening a, a can of soda and you get to your pssst for the, the factors that determine the elasticity of supply. So production lag, this one's obvious. The longer the production lag, okay, the more difficult it is for supply to respond to a change in price. Now bear in mind, let's talk about change in price. That can also be a change in demand. When demand shifts to the right, the price goes up. Okay, so how well can supply respond to that increase in price? When demand goes down, the price falls. How quick can supply respond? Okay, so here we're just looking at the responsiveness of supply. Okay, when the price changes or when demand changes. All right. So if demand goes up, so people are demanding lots of things. If there's a large production lag involved in producing something, well then supply can't respond quickly. Supply will be inelastic. All right, so cereals are a good example. Okay, so a new cereal comes into the market and is in massive demand. Okay, the price goes up massively to represent that. Can suppliers respond? Well, it takes a long time to grow wheat and to harvest wheat. 
So you can't respond necessarily straight away because of the production lag involved. So the larger the, pro the production lag, um, the more inelastic supply will be. A substitutability of factors of production. What the heck does that mean? Okay. Well, let's say you've got a firm that can produce two different types of goods. Maybe it can produce vans or cars. Let's say at the moment it's producing cars, specializing in car production. But for some reason, the price of vans goes up massively. Maybe demand for vans is suddenly increased. Okay. Well, that firm can respond quickly if it can substitute its factors of production away from car production and towards van production. If it can do that very easily, if the factors of production are very substitutable, then supply can respond quickly. Supply is very elastic. But if the factors of production can't be transferred into van production at all, maybe, or it's very difficult to do so, if the factors of production are not suitable, they're not very substitutable, supply will be inelastic. So the substitutability of factors of production is important if a firm can produce more than one type of good. The level of stocks is obvious. The more stocks there are in a warehouse, the more elastic supply will be. Okay? A firm can just let some of those stocks flood onto the market um, if the price goes up. So um, suppliers can respond quite easily. So supply will be elastic the more stocks there are. Spare capacity, again, if there's a large amount of spare capacity in the business, then again, they can respond very simply to a change in price. Okay? They can increase supply by using up some of that spare capacity. So if a business is operating at 50% capacity and suddenly demand goes up or the price goes up, well, they can simply say, well, let's now work at 60% capacity or 65% capacity, whatever they need to do to meet the increase in demand or to meet the price rise. Okay, so the more spare capacity there is, the more elastic supply will be. And time period, this one's difficult to understand. But basically, in the short run, okay, we assume that factors of production tend to be fixed. Okay? At least one factor of production is fixed in the short run, whereas in the long run, you can vary your factors of production. So in the short run, supply will be quite inelastic, because you can't expand production by buying new factors of production or expanding your factors of production. Whereas in the long run, you can buy another factory, you can buy more machinery, you can hire lots and lots of labour. You can expand all, you can increase all of your factors of production, vary them. But in the short run, you might not have the financial capability to do so, the means to do so in the short run. So in the short run, supply tends to be quite inelastic, whereas in the long run, supply is quite elastic. Okay, so anyway, these are the five main factors that determine the elasticity of supply. Okay, and that is elasticity of supply done. Okay, now one thing you should know is most commodities tend to have inelastic supply, mainly because of that reason. Okay, um, and you tend not to have much stock. I mean, a lot of commodities you can't store for a long period of time. So commodities tend to be quite inelastic supply-wise. Same for raw materials, they tend to have quite inelastic supply. It's good just to know that, because when you're drawing a diagram of demand supply, you can show supply being inelastic. It's good for evaluation and it's good for discussion. Okay, so that's PES. Very simple, you know, PE. See you next time.